All right, well, life after the NFL can come with a number of challenges. Some may find the transition easier than others, but for those who don't, it can be hard to find tools or resources to get help if you need it. After the tragic deaths that happened in Rock Hill, a lot of questions circulated about what may have been going through Philip Adams's mind. He was once an accomplished athlete who was described as a quiet man. Joining me right now is celebrity media coach and former broadcast journalist Barbara Penson Lash. Uh, Barbara, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, I want to ask you, can you explain to us the shift in the mindset for a professional athlete once they decide to leave their sport? Thank you for that question. I do want to just first and foremost offer my condolence to all of the families. There's no direction that you can look and not see pain and tragedy. But to answer your question, Fred, it is a huge mindset. I mean, just imagine the one thing that you've loved to do, perhaps since you were six, seven or eight years old, and you finally make it to the pinnacle of that. You put all your energy into it and you're able to do it at the highest level. And then your body says, OK, we're done. But when that happens, the access to the locker room goes away in most cases. And that is devastating to a lot of the athletes I work with both in my coaching practice and in the research I'm doing about black NFL players from humble beginnings. Yeah, and, and what are some of the typical career paths some professional athletes take after they leave the league? So they all really want to stay as close to the game as possible. So you have the player engagement roles that each team offers. You have public speaking. You also have coaching. And then there's broadcasting. In fact, the NFL broadcast boot camp for a long time has been the number one programming that so many athletes have wanted to be a part of just so that they can stay tied to something that they love very much. So these are so there are programs that the NFL offers to its players after they make this transition. Yes, and many of the programs are offered while they're still playing. So if a player has an inclination that they want to do something after they already have pinpointed what that is or they want to test something out, the NFL does offer a number of programming and they also offer access to resources even after the players leave. Of course, they don't have the same amount of access and please keep in mind, I don't work for the NFL, but just from my experience in working with them, there's a team clinician, in fact, with every team and, and there is a possibility that players who have transitioned out of the sport could have access to that clinician. So the NFL is certainly doing what they can, but the athletes themselves, you know, in these interviews I've done, nearly 30 NFL players who, black NFL players who come from humble beginnings, that is such a big deal to them to not just be able to transition appropriately or in a way that they still feel relevant, as Eugene mentioned, but also to have someone to talk to about the journey, not just in the NFL, but their years before that, because sometimes we see that they go back to the communities where they first started, and that can lead to, you know, just really facing issues that they may have never really had time to face playing at the highest level. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an identity, almost like an identity crisis, and uh, awfully some some definitely some unique circumstances uh, that define their lives being in that position. Barbara Penson Lash, thank you so much. Really appreciate your insight.